Can you beat Castle Crashers by only using the worst magic in the game? Let's find out. So for this challenge run we'll be using the King character as he has the worst magic. Please don't start an argument in the comments. And this is because his main magic ability does not do any damage. But since at the beginning of the game the only magic you have is the main magic, we first had to level up a little bit to unlock his second ability. And that is it, he throws a golden banana looking knife. So we begin the run by leaving the king's castle and wait. You think you're the king? I'm the king! I don't know who that guy was, but anyway, my kingdom's been invaded by barbarians, so I take it upon myself as king to protect my people. After clearing out the first area of the game, I went and picked up the Beholder pet as it will give us a plus 4 to our magic stat. I also picked up Hattie's weapon for the plus 3 magic boost as well. So with Hattie's weapon and the Beholder, we were now hitting for a massive 28 damage per knife. So this run was a little bit unusual as what we're used to as we had a lot of damage but we had a very slow fire rate as well as having to rely on recharging our magic bar. So not surprisingly the first boss of the game went down very quickly as we were chunking his health bar. And for the second boss, well he wasn't too much of a challenge. Soon we come across our first giant enemy which if you've seen the level 1 run you know I now have a new hatred for. But luckily since we were using magic I didn't have to go close to these giants so they weren't too difficult to take down. We soon found ourselves in the forest and we eventually came across our third boss of the run. Now this boss like the other two bosses didn't have a lot of health and we did a lot of damage to them but we did have a lot of other enemies to worry about so we had to run around the arena a little bit and jump to throw a knife to get the boss or else his little minions would take them for him. And after being chased for a little bit we end up in the river. Now for some reason in this run we encountered a lot of glitches and here is a good example of a major one but glitches aside we were struggling in this section because our magic wasn't able to hit consistently. Consistently. We could only throw a knife straight and the enemies were below us so we needed to unlock a magic that allowed us to throw downwards. So we went back to the forest to gain some more levels. And soon enough we unlocked the second magic attack we had for this run. It was once again just another knife throwing attack but it allowed us to throw knives downwards whenever we jumped in the air. We quickly moved on to the catfish fight which was very easy and this is because I learned you could block his attack. So all I had to do was block his attacks and then when it came to damage throw as many knives as I could. On top of that our new magic threw knives even faster faster than the original magic so we had more DPS. And for the next boss, the enemies seemed to got a little confused because they thought they were doing a magic only run. So I was just getting spammed with constant magic attack. But the boss himself wasn't too difficult, mainly because we could use this attack which allowed us to shoot from the air, which made it a lot safer to throw our magic. And pretty quickly the boss fell. Soon we entered the caves, which has these slime enemies, which are notorious for being my least favourite enemies in all of Castle Crashers. But I gotta say, they weren't too bad this run. Since I did a lot of damage and had range, I was able to to defeat them pretty quickly so they didn't really have time to run away but eventually we came across our next boss which is the bat boss fight but once again we somehow managed to break the game so for some reason the bat boss just stood there smiling i'm not too sure what caused it but after getting a little bit too cocky this happened oh wait wait no wait 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 wait, wait, wait. oh these bats <laughs> wait, wait 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 i take it back i take it back i take it back i take it back no please let me handle. I'll take it back. <laughs> I deserved it, so I had to run through the entire cave again. But this time, we defeated the bat boss. Next was the flower area, and our doppelganger king was here. So we stole his horse, since we are the rightful king. And I think he very quickly learned his place, as him and the knights did all of the work for us. So after the knights and the fake king took care of the enemies, the fake king seemed to took a liking to me. Yes, king. But soon enough, we went onto the castle walls, and once again, I let the knights do most of the work until a giant enemy spawned in and really wanted me dead. Yeah, I don't think the giant knights really like me. We eventually made our way inside the wedding, where we came across some of the most annoying enemies in the game. So here our jumping magic wasn't really effective because they kept throwing bombs at me, causing me to take damage. But at the same time, I don't think it's even them throwing the bombs, because where did this bomb come from?
After this fight, however, I wanted to try and talk it through instead of fighting, so the enemies decided they would listen, but war, war never changes. For the boss fight at this stage, he wasn't too difficult because you can stun lock him pretty easily. If you got your timing right, you could pretty much just have him on the floor the entire fight. And for the bomb section, all you really had to do was run around and not get caught. So yeah, pretty easy boss. And for the carriage section of the run, we actually learned that the boss has a very strange hitbox. You have to hit his eye dead on with the magic as the jumping magic wasn't doing anything since it was almost like missing his hitbox. So once we figured that out, it wasn't too difficult. And after slowly making our way through the areas of the game, we made it to the Cyclops boss fight. Now this guy is really not too bad and probably one of my favourite bosses in the game because you have to get your timing right and if you do, he isn't that difficult. So all I had to do was dodge his attacks and then get my damage in between and by doing this I was able to get his health down pretty fast and even skip his entire enraged mode so we were finally able to rescue the second princess and wait we're the king and they're the princesses and we are uh, oh and moving into the lava world we unlock these sandwiches which allows your character to become big and buff but this isn't a good thing yeah i probably wasn't going to eat the sandwiches too much up ahead we had a very close call with these skeletons there were a lot of them and i can only damage them one at a time so it was getting a little bit sketchy on top of that whenever i'd run out of my mana bar i would have to wait for it to recharge but luckily i was able to get through it and eventually we came across our next boss of the run but unfortunately this boss is a pain and that is because you can only defeat him whilst in sandwich mode this means he's immune to regular attacks magic attacks and pretty much anything that isn't sandwich mode so for this run can you beat castle crashes using only magic then the answer is no but if you've seen the other videos on this channel then you know this isn't going to stop us so after swiftly defeating the boss in sandwich mode we moved on we eventually come across the dragon boss fight and similar to the bow and arrow run we had to get in a specific spot in order to damage the boss However, the hitboxes for magic seem to be a lot more forgiving than the bow and arrow hitboxes as we were able to consistently hit him. This meant we were able to defeat the dragon boss fight pretty quickly. And after the dragon boss fight, we were able to collect the golden wheel. This meant we only needed one more thing to progress the next part of the game, and that is the golden telescope. It can be found in the industrial castle, so that's where we headed off to next. The industrial castle is very difficult since it has some of the best magic using enemies in the game, as well as it having just a lot of enemies. On top of that, we only just hit level 10. So the way the XP system works in Castle Crashes is it's based on the amount of hits you do to enemies. So since we are doing a lot of damage, which means we don't need to hit them very often, we are barely getting any XP. But next we moved on to the elevator section, which as you can imagine, wasn't too fun. There are a lot of enemies in a very cramped space and we can only damage them one at a time. Plus these enemies love to throw bombs. So I slowly defeated them one by one and luckily just made it past the elevator but to compensate for that the boss fight was very easy on this build since for this boss fight you really want to have range instead of melee damage and we just so happen to have a lot of damage in a ranged build so the boss quickly fell i once again asked my chat if the industrial castle prince should live or die you guys are maniacs and just like that we had the golden telescope we then went and got the leaf weapon to upgrade our stats as it gave a plus three to magic and a minus one to strength and one quick boat trip later and we we were in the desert area. We were now hitting for a massive 45 damage per knife. So these enemies didn't stand the chance. I normally hate these enemies, but since I didn't have to go close to them to melee them, I was able to defeat them very quickly. And that goes for this entire area, as normally a melee build would be very slow in this area, but throwing knives was very fast. And for the UFO bosses, it was very fast since our knives were now hitting night trucks. And for the alien section, it was a little bit slow since we could only damage one enemy at a time, but it wasn't too difficult. And for the escape scene, we of course did it first try. Try. So it turns out the aliens are a pretty decent XP farm, so of course that's why I went back to do it again. But we had actually unlocked the final magic we can use for this build, and that is the King's Jump Attack. This magic allows us to jump quite high, but will also damage any enemies that are near us. And on top of that, it's the King's only magic that can damage more than one enemy at once. So this was actually huge, as we were able to damage multiple enemies in a single magic use. And for the second escape scene, I was able to make it to the escape pod pretty easily since... 
well, I was actually trying this one. And soon we made it inside the sandcastle. Here we come across a lot of giants, but once again, with a ranged build, it wasn't difficult. And combining our jump magic with our knife magic, we're able to get a lot of DPS from a very safe distance. So we flew through this stage all the way to the volleyball game. And we did it first try. This gave us the map, which allowed us to progress to the next area of the game. Now there's an increasing difficulty for the next part, and that can be seen here when we go against four giants and more enemies. On top of that, it's quite a small arena, but eventually I was able to run around in circles and kill them off one by one. And once I got past that part, I actually used the king's magic to heal myself. And soon we came across the corn boss, which is one of the most annoying and random bosses in the game. But luckily, once again, since we're using a range build that did a lot of damage, we were able to get very consistent damage on the corn boss. So it took a long time, as it always takes a long time on this boss, but it wasn't too difficult. And soon enough, the corn boss fell and we got our horn. Using the horn, we were able to unlock the next area of the game, which had these murloc enemies, but I did the castle crashes equivalent of teabagging them to death, and I would use this for pretty much the entire area. Until we eventually came across the Medusa boss fight, which, not surprisingly, was very easy. All we had to do was keep a distance from her, and she pretty much could do nothing. So after a little bit of throwing golden knives at her, she eventually died. But moving on, we went on to the part of the game which is easily the hardest non-boss area, and that is because the enemies in this area have a lot of armor, so they have a good damage resistance, as well as doing good damage themselves. I thought I was doing alright since I was doing 44 damage, but I got humbled pretty quickly. Yes, that giant just one shot me. But on the second attempt, I took it a little bit more slowly and carefully, keeping my distance from the giants and was able to push through all three of them. And after defeating the giants, we go against a lot of the small enemies. And if you saw my last Castle Crashers run, you would have seen that we created a strat called the Ladder Strat. So we kind of used that to make a Ladder Strat 2.0. By climbing down the ladders, it forces all of the enemies to follow you, and that perfectly groups them together to get one big attack on every single enemy. And by using my magic jump, I could damage all of them as well as just jump to the top of the ladder. So I used Ladder Strat 2.0 to defeat all of the enemies and move on to the next area. For the snow part, it was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. In this section, some of these enemies will stay behind ice barriers and throw snowballs. This made it very difficult as I could only damage one enemy at a time as well as having to constantly dodge these snowballs. And more often than not, I would get caught quite a bit. So this area actually took a lot longer than I thought it was going to do as well as being very difficult. It just goes to show how different parts of the game can be either very difficult or very easy depending on how you play. But after a while, we made it to the Ice King boss fight. Now I actually forgot to grab Yeti for this fight, which is a pet that makes it so you can't be frozen, but it didn't really matter since most of my damage was done from a range, it meant that I wasn't really going to get frozen. On top of that, using the jump magic mixed with the knife magic, it meant I could actually get very fast, consistent DPS whilst being out of range of freezing. So surprisingly, this boss fight was very easy. On top of that, we were doing 65 damage per knife, so eventually the Ice King fell, and we finally saved the third princess. Just don't think about it. And with the Ice King defeated, we could finally move on to the final section of the game. Now these enemies before the final four bosses, I thought were going to be a massive problem, as they are 100% resistance to elemental magic. This means that if you try to use magic on them as an elemental character, you will do one damage as well as not stunning them. Now I was really worried for this part, as I thought this could have been a run killer. But luckily, banana shaped looking knives don't count as elemental magic. So the enemies just took the damage as normal. And before defeating any of the four bosses, I actually went and changed my pet as well as my weapon. So with the new gear acquired, I went and took on the first of the four final bosses. For the first boss, I thought it was going to be pretty difficult since we had a low defense, but I was very wrong. We were hitting for 50 damage per knife, so DPS wasn't going to be a problem. On top of that, since we could do range damage, this meant that I could defeat the paintings from a safe distance, allowing us to not take the damage. So this fight went pretty quick. I was able to get constant very fast DPS on the boss and defeat his paintings. So one of four bosses down. However, something pretty unexpected happened. So after defeating the boss, you have to destroy this crystal in order to unlock the next boss. But for whatever reason, this crystal was a boss in of itself. 
and there's two more. But after Crystal the Invincible felt, we could move on to the second boss. For the second boss, it turns out there's a cheese that someone in my chat let me know about. And if you let him slam you with the coffin, you would go underground. But as long as you stayed underground, they just couldn't do anything. So I used this to pretty much cheese the boss. In fact, it got so bad that the boss decided he wanted to leave. But after some persuading, the boss came back so I could finally defeat him. And that's two of four bosses down. Now moving on to the third boss and I was pretty afraid. So I recorded this run pretty much a few days after my level one run. So I was still pretty beaten up about the necromancer fight. If you don't know what I mean, then I highly recommend you watch this video here. But I was very afraid to do this fight. I mustered up the courage to finally go and face this boss again. I died. Uh, was this gonna be another two hours of my life? Surprisingly, no. No, it wasn't. Since I had access to the jump magic, this allowed me to get away from the enemies, so it protected me from things such as getting caught in a juggle by the enemies. On top of that, I was able to combo it with my knife throwing magic, allowing me to stay in the air for quite a decent amount of time and damage the enemies below. So surprisingly, I defeated all the waves of enemies. But surely the necromancer was going to be difficult, right? Nope. If you ever wanted to see the necromancer get teabagged to death, then here you go. Pretty surprising considering how the last challenge run went. But after defeating the necromancer we had to defeat crystal the invincible one last time and after that we could finally move on to the last boss of this run for the final boss the first phase wasn't too difficult it was just a little slow as we could only really damage one crystal at a time but after a little bit we got onto the second phase of the boss fight since our magic hit like a truck all we had to do was wait for the blue bubble which allows magic damage only and get in our hits we were hitting for 63 damage so it went by pretty fast and once again the third third phase wasn't too difficult. Using our jump magic and knife attack combo we were able to get very good DPS on his little bubble phase. So three phases down, three to go. Surely his spider phase will be difficult. Nope. Once again by using our jump magic to get height we just threw knives at him. We were doing a lot of damage and throwing it out quickly. For the fifth phase, well it went exactly how you thought it was gonna go. And for his final phase, surprisingly was very easy. Since when he jumped up to shoot his meteors, we could actually reach him with our jump magic once again and well just spam knives but after a very short amount of time the boss finally died we landed on the crystal and caught the final princess we rode the crystal all the way back to my castle and well oh thank god for clowns and that is it can you beat castle crashers using only magic technically no but actually yes but before we end the video, I would just like to give a massive thank you to all the channel members seen here. So thank you Spicona, Kraken, Get Squeezy and Devin Songs. But anyway guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.